Uh, now let's look really at what we have um, going on with this high res mesh and this low res mesh. Now there's a difference between the two meshes obviously. One is more dense and one is not. There's a higher level of detail in the higher res, or high res mesh and a lower level of detail in the low res mesh. We would possibly use the high res mesh for things like film or things like television in which they're just rendered out and the low res mesh is needed for optimization when it comes to interactivity and real-time functions such as video games. So how do we have all these video games that have super high res looking elements? Think of like Grand Theft Auto, Arkham Asylum, uh, any really any video game out there does this. Well what they do is a process called normal mapping and they actually transfer the attributes or the look or the density from one model to a lower res shell. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me control Z back to where my models are on top of each other. You have to work basically in this case on the same um, shape of the model. You can see they still kind of hold similarities uh, to one another as we work. And we're gonna do a really quick and down and dirty way of doing this. There's all a bunch of other settings that we could use. Uh, we're going to not use those right off the bat. Um, to get started, let's go into our modeling menu and let's go ahead and do something called UV mapping. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just go to UV automatic mapping. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to go to object mode for both the high res and the low res. Now, I'm not going to explain what UV mapping is in detail, but let's just say, and let me go into the UV editor here, what we want to do is essentially separate out um, all of our faces. So you can see this is a good represent representation if I've kind of flattened out all the different pieces of my model. Um, they don't have to match up identically, it will be okay. So once you do that, I want you to go to your menu set and I want you to change it to rendering. In rendering, I want you to go to lighting and shading or lighting slash shading and find the attribute called transfer maps. Go ahead and open transfer maps and I'm going to do a quick uh, reset of all settings just so we all have the same thing. So you do the same, reset settings. And let's go ahead and look at these tabs. Let's start with target meshes. Our target mesh is this low res element here at the bottom. So I'm going to select only that and hit add selected. Then I have a source mesh. That is the mesh that it reads to grab all the data from. That's our very dense green mesh. So I'm gonna hit add selected there with only that mesh selected. Next, it gives me options of the different maps I want. In this case, I wanna use a normal map. And a normal map is like a 3D bump map. And a bump map is basically showing a tactile or a texture feel to a relatively smooth object. Let's change our file format and let's make it a targa. And we'll put, uh, we'll call this it's something other than sample normals. We'll just call this normals. It's going to go to our barrel project folder, which is great. And let's continue to go downward. Connect output maps. We want that. We want to be able to see it. Maya output. Now here we're going to enter some data. I'm going to do 512 by 512. The higher the numbers you have, the better it will look, the longer it will take. So you have to have some patience with this one. Um, we want the sampling quality to be medium for this demo and I'm going to transfer in world space. So you can see up here there's another space, tangent space versus object space. Typically if you're going to animate something, um, you want to transfer normals in tangent space. If it's a very stationary background object, object, object space will work. Um, the way that these elements work here, um, typically you can go with world space and not worry. Object space and UV space um, basically discuss if you're transferring a shape that doesn't look like the other shape or you're trying to like not match up things. So they, these share the same world, so we're gonna do that. Uh, let's go down a little further and I'm gonna go to advanced options. And these can be fiddled with uh, depending on what you're doing. Uh, for our method, I know it works because I've tried it. We're gonna use closest to envelope and geometry normals. Uh, sometimes you have to do inside envelope and surface normals. So it's really up to you. Um, but these shapes are pretty close to each other that we can do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit bake and close and we're gonna just wait. And this is gonna take a couple seconds. You can see um, that was relatively quick comparatively to some methods. But what it's done 
is essentially, and if you look real close, look at that. It's really interesting, isn't it? Now, you're probably saying, oh, you just duplicated it. This is our mesh on one. Now wait for it. That's our mesh on the other. So what it did, and it basically created a texture map uh, called a normal map. And this normal map is kind of pasting this texture or this bumpiness on the model itself. And it's a lot lower res, isn't it? Look at the difference here. This is the optimization of this is a lot faster. Now it goes one step further. Let me go ahead and put a light into this scene. And we know when we have a light, we hit seven on our keyboard. Normal maps actually react to lighting as if it were actually modeled. So you can see it, especially on the top. You see how the shadows are actually reacting? So these are 3D representations of, of essentially of dense and all sorts of fun stuff. Look at those, that's really cool. And if I turn off my wireframe on shaded, you would really not be able to tell the difference between the two. So this is the type of mesh you'll use in a video game, while this, this may be saved for a movie or whatnot. And that's how programs like ZBrush and Mudbox and these sculpting programs work. They take billions and billions of polygons and mesh them, and then somebody builds a low-res shell around that object, and it's transferred from one to the other. So I hope you really enjoyed this lesson. And uh, I hope you actually get to use normal maps at some point. I, everyone in the class will at some point in the semester. Um, it takes some time and patience. It's not always as easy as I made it look, but the outcome is phenomenal. So I'll catch you guys next time and uh, have a good one.